Day's finally come, I guess. <laughs> Good afternoon, family, friends, fellow Trojans, fellow Marines and sailors, commanders, and senior enlisted. Thank you all for taking the time out of your busy lives to share this special moment with my family and I as we mark this momentous occasion with a retirement ceremony, tacos, and yes, even a couple margaritas and some baseless. <laughs> I'd like to also recognize the San Diego Marine Corps Band for being here and the uh, RTR Color Guard um, for making this moment uh, even more special for me. So thank you. All right, now listen, I've spent a lot of time working on this speech. So since this is the last time I get to sit up here and run my lips, I'm now gonna subject all of you to listen to it. <laughs> Even against the advice of some of you who said I should just go off the cuff, there's absolutely no way that I could possibly do that. I have undiagnosed ADD and a mild TBI. And I'm easily <laughs> distracted by shiny things and loud noises. <laughs> So since I am the only thing standing between you and drinks at the bar, I've done all of you a favor and wrote all this down. Uh, I feel as though I owe all of you the absolute truth as to why I have decided to retire. Realizing that I will never be as cool as rolling around in Victor 6 in Afghanistan with three 240 Bravos mounted, rocking out to Slipknot with Dirty Dan, and double D while we blast the Taliban in the green zone, regardless of what Daryl says. <laughs> the time has come for me to invest my time into my family and my future pursuits as a businessman and an entrepreneur. This decision to pivot in a new direction was in large part because of the utter and absolute failure in the talent management of the 8999 community, which I know some of you are aware. All I wanted out of my next move was to stay on the West Coast and serve in a unit that in the words of Mo Powell has more hunters than gatherers in it. <laughs> you know, real modern savages. <laughs> I, am I am more than stoked with my decision and grateful for the opportunity to have served so many years, but now the time has come for me to turn my attention to Heather, Brody, and Kinsley. Mm -hmm. Heather, you have been my rock and my azimuth that has guided me to the success that I have enjoyed in my life thus far. We both knew that from the moment I caught you checking me out that night in Coyotes in Carlsbad, <laughs> that we would be together forever. You have always been there for me from the late nights calling you, from Afghanistan not knowing if I would ever hear your voice again to sending me protein, <laughs> sending me protein resupply packages on a ship because you knew they didn't feed us enough. <laughs> I have left you alone numerous times, whether it be for deployment or some crazy school in the, in the pursuit of being a man of action and adventure. Much to my reluctance sometimes, you've always guided me, supported me into the man and father that I am today. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. And I love you. Brody, also known as the Brodega. <laughs> I am so proud of the man that you are growing into. I love that you have found lacrosse. And I love that Mr. Matt and Frankie T will be there to coach you. I am so happy that I will always be there to guide, mentor, and rock out with you on the way to school from here on out. I love that Guns N' Roses is your favorite band. <laughs> and I love that you have the sickest flow of hair on your lacrosse team. <laughs> I'm excited to see you grow into a man and I'm even more excited that I will be here for it. Kinsley, my sweet baby girl, I'm equally as proud of you for the little woman that you are becoming. You have found a sense of passion and belonging with cheerleading. You have overcome personal challenges and seen the benefit of hard work by winning first place in Las Vegas. I am so glad that I will be around for you as you continue to grow up into a woman as beautiful as your mother. 
now if I can just keep you two from killing each other because you're so much alike. <laughs> John, Tori, Aunt Kim, Uncle Brian, Grandma Lotes, I would literally not be standing here today if it were not for you. My beautiful grandmother took me in at the beginning of my sophomore year and set me on a trajectory for success by demanding more from me and encouraging me through her faith in the Lord and from time to time a wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> sure all of you can see that. <laughs> John and Tori, you've been amazing parents, mentors, and my biggest fans. Literally on my Facebook uh, business page, you guys are my biggest fans. <laughs> <laughs> Your support and love has enabled me to accomplish things I would have never thought possible. You are the greatest grandparents to our children and a shining example of what success looks like for everyone in our family. Thank you so much. This is the fun part. The last 20 years have been a wild ride and I've had the privilege to serve with the most savage warriors to ever walk this earth. Men that truly embody what this warfighting institution stands for through actions, not petty words or cheap recruiting slogans. Men that traveled the IED laden roads, roads of Route Mobile in Iraq. Men that went toe to toe day by day with the Taliban in Afghanistan in places like the Green Zone. Men that sailed for months in the Gulf of Aden and the Mediterranean ready to lay down the hate. On deployment, we stand for something. We are here to show those guys that are inching along their way on the freeways in their metal coffins that the human spirit is still alive. Only some of you have seen that movie. It's unacceptable. <laughs> These are men like my retiring officer, Captain Stephan Endicott, who joined the Corps from Anchorage, Alaska, never having seen the sun before and weighing in at a stout 140 pounds <laughs> to only find himself four years later as an infantry squad leader with 7th Marines at 185 pounds fighting on a rooftop in Iraq in silkies, flip-flops, and an interceptor vest while he and his squad lay waste to a Mujahideen meeting in a marketplace below. Or about the time he smoked an enemy mortar team launching rounds on a friendly position from the other side of a Syrian border. I don't think anyone else here can say that their name was briefed to the President of the United States for causing an international incident. <laughs> <laughs> Men like Master Sergeant Daryl Hall, who is a plank owner of MSOC Bravo Season 1, and is a former MARSOC instructor, he is a recurring nightmare in the dreams of would-be CSOs. Men like John Harris, who is the most savage officer I have ever met in my life, who is also the only person I know that has fought in Afghanistan and Libya, staking claim to the term, any climb and place. John also coins the term, if you are not willing to bathe in the blood of our nation's enemies, then you're in the wrong organization. Among other key terms that I will not utter in front of the children. <laughs> Guys like Gunny Chris Irby, who has been to every single sniper school in the DOD to include being a sniper school instructor. In his spare time, he found the time to deploy, to combat multiple times, attend jump school, dive school, jump master, free fall school, free fall jump master, dive supervisor, and JTAC, basically all of it. He also has the most rando tattoos and is the funniest guy I have ever met and turns into a complete psychopath after he has a few drinks, so you know, need to watch out. <laughs> Men like Ryan Pippen, who wants IT to recruit for 30 minutes until he had a heart attack. And then he made the only recruit on the island that was a medical doctor, doctor bring him back to life. <laughs> he is also a terminal gunny because he refuses to be anybody but himself, which is awesome. <laughs> Men like freaking Master Sergeant Tommy Hartrick, whose platoon was hand selected by General Mattis himself to conduct a 90 day workup and deploy to Afghanistan with only one mandate. And I quote, 
you will conduct night raids night after night and kill as many of those MFers as possible until they crawl back into the cave from which they came. Tommy was also named Force Recon Team Leader of the Year as a Bronze Star recipient, OIF-1, Fallujah, and Marja Vet. He also is the recipient of 26105s for misuse of his government travel charge card <laughs> at a bar in Greece for his wet down party to Master Sergeant. <laughs> In his defense, his personal card and the government travel charge card do look very similar. <laughs> Men like uh, Master Sergeant Larry O'Connor, um, who as a sergeant was uh, turning Mujahideen's heads into Pez dispensers from a rooftop sniper position in Fallujah. He also a few years later made, made a cameo appearance in the famous sniper SS photo seen around the Marine Corps and every PME on what professionalism is not. <laughs> there are just too many great Marines and veterans here tonight to mention for which I am grateful to know. However, I would regret it if I didn't mention a few groups of people that have been immensely uh, important with my transition to the greener grass <laughs> on the other side of the fence. Guys like Nelson Coburn, who gave me the confidence to be a realtor. Men like Matt Bartles and Scott Schwartz, who have supported me to push away from the Marine Corps and to grow my business. My chain of command, Colonel Matt Palma, Sergeant Major Paul Agan, Lieutenant Colonel Tracy Maese, who helped me get into intrepid spirit, deal with my idiot monitor, and basically let me go on free terminal leave for two months early. <laughs> My family and I really appreciate that. <laughs> Last but not least, I'd like to thank my newfound Trojan family. Dane, Jake, Jesse, Josh, Mike, Nico, Tom, Andrew, Charles, and Sean Fritz. This last year has been one of the most challenging years of my life. And it, is a, it was an honor and a privilege to go through MBV with you. Thank you so much for the newfound Trojan Brotherhood and lifelong friendship. Fight on. Yeah. My advice to all those that will listen is that if you want the ultimate, you have to be willing to pay the ultimate price. Oh God, <laughs> you, have to, you, want to, you have to be able to invest in yourself through education, build lifelong relationships, hedge your future bets on yourself, and give time to the ones you love with the time that you have left. I joined the Marine Corps with two sea bags to my name, and I'm leaving with a beautiful family, amazing friends, a world-class education, and, ex and experiences that most people wouldn't have in a hundred lifetimes. In closing, I'd like to leave you with a poem that I heard at Jacqueline's retirement that I feel is very fitting for this occasion. Now that I have, mo now I've modified it a little bit because it's my retirement and I can do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Men, the core is a mistress. Your wives will envy her because she will have your hearts. Your wives will be jealous of her because of her power to pull you away. This mistress will show you things never before seen and you will experience things never before felt. She will love you, but only a little seduce you to want more, to give more, and to die for her. She will take you away from the ones that you love, and you will hate her for it. But leave her you never will. But if you must, you will miss her, for she is a part of you that will never be returned intact. And in the end, she will leave you for another younger man. <laughs> James R. Ward, OSS Vet, 1944. Okay, boys. Little hand says it's time to rock and roll. So after this, please join me at the bar. Attaboy.